Over the last few weeks, we've been having a lot of fun playing around with acrylic paint texturing, and based upon some of the great ideas you folks have sent in, I have some more for you this week on Mixed Media Masters. Hello, makers, and welcome to Spectiva Studios. Now, if this is your first time here, then it's good to have you here. By the way, we drop a video every single week, so if learning about how to use painting supplies and mixed media and creating art is the kind of thing that makes you interested, yeah, hit on that subscribe button. We'd love to talk to you more every single week. Now, as promised today, we're gonna to go back into our exploration of different types of acrylic paint texturing. We've covered a pretty good assortment of textures and techniques over the last few weeks, and today I want to provide you with five more things that we can do. Some of them are very surprising, and the results we're going to get. Now, as we've done in the past, I'm just working on some just some sample pieces of heavy-duty watercolor paper, and it's just going to allow us to proof of concept. We're not making any masterpieces today. We'll, we'll do that in some upcoming videos for sure. But for the most part, if I'm working with my piece of paper and I want to create something that's going to be you know, just a different type of texture and something that's interesting and not just flat colors on a piece of paper. How can I make that happen? And as promised, we're gonna be looking at a couple of different things we can do today. Let's start off with something fairly simple, and that is I'm gonna lay down some paint on here, just using a standard paintbrush, and make it a little bit wet. And then I'm going to change the texture of it using a paper towel. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. I'm gonna get some I guess I just get some colors in here that I can blend together. We'll get some of this orange, orange yellow. And uh, let's get some, got some bright yellow here as well. Let's get that on here. Again, we don't need too much since we're gonna blend it all together. And now the real objective here is let's just create something that we can create a, you know, a bit of a gradient effect between these two colors as much as we want. There we go. I'm gonna get some good, good coverage on my piece of paper here. Nice bright background. Now I'm going to want to add a little bit of water to this. By the way, using a, a spray bottle is really one of the better ways to do this. I don't have mine set up today for some reason. I'm not sure where it's scurried off to. So I'm just going to use a, a little bit of water that I can drop on, onto here. And again, the objective here is just to get this paint a little bit more pliable. So I'm going to mix that water in and get something that's a little bit, uh, just a little bit more liquefied. There we go. And that should give us the effect we want. Now, the orange is pretty much dominated, but that may change when we come in here. And what I want to do is I want to grab a paper towel, not unlike, uh, not unlike this one right here, and I may even fold it over just to make it a little bit easier for me. I'm going to make it a little damp just to kind of get a little, a little moisture in there using uh, my water bottle here. And the objective now is to come in here and to press it into the paint that I've already put down and then I'm going to peel it away and I'm going to reveal a very unique texture. Now this is a variation on something we did a few weeks back. But again, this is one of those things after the fact. If I'm working on a large canvas, let's say, and I have a section I want to put some texture, if I wet it down and then can hit it with a paper towel, then I can create something that's going to hopefully show the colors in the background that will come through. We can also take our paper towel and instead of relying on the textures in here, let me get this a little bit more wet. I can also kind of crumple it up, and with it crumpled up, now it's an opportunity for me to have a little bit more texturing based upon the crumples and not on the texture of the paper towel. And by the way, the, the texture of the paper towel is going to matter, but if I come in here and just do some dabbing, I can again affect what the overall texture is going to be that's left on the paper. All right, so a simple technique, but one that can be incredibly effective. Now let's take a look at texture number two. Okay, now this time we're going to do a slight variation on that theme. And again, I'm going to lay down some basic colors to get started. I have a purple here. I'm not going to overwhelm myself with paint this time. That was a little too much on the last piece. And let's get some of this uh, lighter yellow in here. This will go nice with the, uh, with the purple. And again, we'll just kind of, it's a little thick, giving me a little grief coming out, but that'll work. And uh, let's get this, uh, this turquoise or teal blue color in here as well. Again, just uh, something we can blend together is the overall objective. And again, I'm going to start a, a little bit of a kind of, just creating some swaths of color. I'll do kind of my blue down here. Make that happen. All right. There we go. And uh, let's do the same thing for uh, the yellow. Again, we're going to kind of pick that up and blend it in this area best we can. 
And this, by the way, this paint is very thick, so uh, it, it's almost like putting paste down at this point. This one's a little wetter. There we go. And again, the, the overall goal is just to get something we can affect with our, with our colors. Now again, I'm going to drop a little bit of water in here because uh, we're going to need some. Because this paint, again, is, is incredibly, incredibly thick. I could have started with some thinner paint. That might, have, that might have made things a little easier. But hey, you know what? Sometimes we just have to be able to pivot, and here we are pivoting. All right. This is not masterpiece -y right now at all. <laughs> but it, when it dries, it will be a little bit more so. But again, with proof of concept, a couple things that I can show you here. And what I want to do now is I want to use a variation of what we did just did with the paper towels, and I want to use instead newspaper. And there are two variations on this theme that I want to share with you. Uh, one is I've taken some newspaper and just cut it into strips. And one of the things I can do is if I come in here and I place the strips into my wet paint, then where it peels off, I'm going to pick this up now, it's going to leave some demarcation. Now again, maybe very hard to see on camera, but that is one thing you can do. So if you wanted to come in here and take these strips of paper and crisscross them and create something to pick up some of that paint, it's going to also, also going to show the background color. In this case, case, the yellow is coming through a little bit better. Now another thing I can do is just take a piece of newspaper and I can crumple it up. And then use this almost like I would a sponge and I can dab at the paint. And as I push on this, it's going to transfer the texture of the crumpled newspaper ball into the artwork. Now this, as you can see, is a lot more dramatic a look. And it allows us to create something that has some raised texture. And also you can see the color, like the blue that was kind of covering everything, has now been removed to reveal the yellow and the purple that's underneath it. And again, this is the kind of thing that if you're working on a canvas and you have a section and you want it to be a little bit more interesting, a crumpled up ball of newspaper would be just something you dab at it to create some sort of a textured effect. So there we go. There's texture number two. Let's take a look at texture number three. Now for this texture, we are going to use paint that's a lot thinner. I have some paint that I've watered down, so I have a couple of squeeze bottles here. I have some red in here and some purple in here. And if we want, we also have some, uh, some sky blue and some orange. Now the objective of this technique uh, is to let gravity help us out. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to drop some paint here at the top of my painting. And again, I'm just going to create kind of a line and maybe do a little something like that. And cap that and I'm going to do the same thing with some purple come in here and let's just kind of fill in some of the other areas that we have like that and uh, let's get some uh, let's get some of this sky blue in there as well I think this will oops, this is definitely definitely ready to go and one last thing uh, what the heck we have orange let's put some orange in here more uh, the more the merrier now as you uh, may have uh, already figured out we're going to use the wetness of the paint and we're going to now take the paper and we're going to tilt it and we're going to let it run down. That's why I have this protective sheet here. And uh, we're going to create some interesting textures. I'll show you what we're seeing in just a second. There we are. So the cool thing about this approach, again, is if we're working on a vertical surface like a canvas, and we wanted to be able to do something to really create, again, an interesting texture or a cover, uh, a paint overlay covering of some sort, then being able to have some of this paint that's uh, probably not super, super thin, but something that we can squirt on our canvas in places and have it drip down is going to create a really, really cool effect. As you can see, it's blended the colors kind of nicely. We can get some really fun variations on a theme. So again, none of these are hard, but it's just being able to think about places where we can use these different textures. Now that's number three. Let's take a look at number four. Now our next technique is going to require maybe going to the kitchen and rummaging through the recycle drawer. Yeah, that's right. We, uh, we're working with recycled materials. I have uh, some bottle caps in here, uh, some containers. I have, uh, you know, just a, a can and uh, a bottle. Uh, and I also have some uh, stainless steel, steel wool. But basically, anything that we can create textures with is really what we want to think about. Now, I, um, we're starting this off with a piece of paper that I've already provided a foundation of color to, just so we have something we can pop against, something that's a little bit more interesting than just on the white. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And again, we're going to just take a standard paintbrush, and I have a palette here with some colors on it. No right way to do this, but if I come in here, for example, and grab my paintbrush, and just start paint, painting around the ring of my bottle cap, let's say, right? just as a, an example of something I might be able to use 
uh, as, a, as a stamp almost, then I can take this and I can come into my piece of artwork and I can press it down for a moment and then pull it up. And so I've made a ring, which is not surprising, pretty much what I was looking to do. Next, we're gonna grab uh, just a, a soda can, whatever you might have lying around. I'm gonna grab, uh, well, how about a little bit of this orange up here? And I'm gonna hit the rim. And again, it doesn't have to be a precise job. We're just trying to get some color up here on top of this because we're hoping to do a bit of a transfer. By the way, if you are using your recycled uh, materials, which you may be, um, make sure you clean them. You know, make sure there's no food on them. You don't wanna put food on your artwork or have, you know, leftover beer in the can or whatever you have here. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna come in here again. I'm using it almost like a stamp. I kind of go in here and I might even spin it a little bit if I want to get that off and then again I'm creating a ring it's a subtle effect but we're not looking to overwhelm things here we're looking to create that the subtleties um, so we can do that again I have other containers I can create rings if that's what I want uh, steel wool let's try this out I'm going to grab this uh, this blue color right here and again I'm going to use this kind of as a dabbing thing I'm going to come in here and I'm going to dab it into the area that I want to affect let's put some right there Cool. I'm going to grab a little of this uh, magenta too, and we'll kind of overlay that over what we're doing here. A little, a little purple. Why the heck not? Okay. Now again, you might you might want to have a, another piece of paper that you can kind of dab it off so you can get to the point where it's uh, very speckly, like it kind of is here without lots of lots of big uh, blobs of color in there. But again, the bottom line is to be able to create something. I'll just do that. I'm going to use a paper towel to kind of hit this initially, get the big blob out of there, and then I can start coming in here. There we go. It's going to be a little bit more refined. And you can start to see with the speckling that we're doing here, I'll do the same thing for our magenta color here. Get some of the big blob off and then do, do, do. Let's get that in like that. So the layering looks really, really, really cool. Again, depending on the background color we're using here. So being able to use a, uh, and, and you can wash these again. I'm gonna make sure this gets washed before, <laughs> before it dries so it doesn't go away. Uh, by the way, you don't wanna use um, a steel wool pad that has soap in it, okay? You don't wanna use one of those because that's just gonna mess up your artwork and get a lot of unnecessary chemicals on things you might wanna stick around for a while. So a stainless steel scrubber is a good option. And again, if you wanna make rings, there's all sorts of options in your recycle bin that will allow you to create some really cool types of effects that you can do whatever you want with as a next step. Now for the fifth effect, I'm gonna share with you something I think is pretty cool. Okay, and for our final effect, we're gonna do something kind of interesting here. Again, I'm gonna be laying down some paint. I'm gonna make it kind of thick. That's the objective this time. I'm gonna do some greens and blues, I think. That's gonna be uh, kind of the color family I'm looking at. Here's some green for sure. And uh, I'm gonna put one more blue in here, kind of this, this lighter sky, type blue. There we go. Let's get some of that in there. That'll work. And uh, I'm taking a palette knife this time and uh, I'm just kind of, I'm going to spread this stuff. I'm going to spread it out almost like I'm frosting the paper with this stuff and it is thick enough to be a bit of a, a frosting. And let's get some of this in here as well. And uh, we'll incorporate the, uh, the darker aqua up here. And again, let's kind of fill that in best we can. Now I want to have some moisture in this paint, uh, but what I'm really looking for here at the end of the day is, is not really even the color combination. I'm looking at the effect we're going to uh, expose on here. Now unless, you, uh, <laughs> unless you've never ever ordered anything with electronics, you are probably familiar with these little silica gel packs that come with electronics and other things that the uh, manufacturers would like to keep as dry as possible. By the way, you can find these in uh, uh, seaweed snack packages too, like Nori, if you're familiar with that. Um, I just got some of these recently in a game that I, I ordered. Now, uh, it does say do not eat, so please don't do it. No, no, take it out of your mouth. Don't, don't, don't eat this. I have no idea what the president is and who said, hmm, I got some electronics and they sent me a candy as well. But uh, what we wanna do is we wanna take a, a take advantage of the drying effects. So what silica gel is designed to do is it's a packet that's put in and it's designed to draw water molecules toward it so that it doesn't get on the equipment during shipping, etc. And so this is basically something that uh, attracts moisture. And what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to, I'm just opening one of these up with a pair of scissors and I'm going to scatter it on the surface of uh, our masterpiece here because this is going to over time, as it dries, it's going to create an interesting effect. I'm going to do another one since I, I have a couple to work with here. And let me uh, just 
Yes, yes, I'm the guy who collects uh, silica gel packs from things and puts them in a pile. Uh, but I do find that this is a very interesting effect, and I'm glad I have some of these to be able to share with you. All right, I'm just going to kind of distribute them around like that. All right, now you may not be able to see it very well on camera because they are rather translucent. But what I want to do now is I want to give this some time to dry. And I'm not going to hit this with a hair dryer because I want the desiccant balls to actually wick up as much of the moisture as possible. And once it is dried sufficiently, I'll, I'll come back and show you what the results look like. Okay, we've given the painting a, a little bit of time to dry here. And uh, one of the things I'll just share with you is the more time it has to dry, the better the results are going to be. And what we're trying to do here basically is every place one of these little desiccant balls has touched, when we now pick it off, it's going to leave behind a, a, a white speck. Basically, it's going to leave behind an area where the paint was drawn up into the ball. And again, it's very subtle right here. I'm not, I'm not seeing a, the, the massive effect. If you let this dry for a few days and then come back and do this, you'll be able to see it. Again, you can see a little bit of the, the dots that are showing up in here. There are a few more. But it's, uh, it really is going to work a lot better if you give it more time to, uh, to dry. And let's get these off of here. But you can start to see, hopefully, even on the camera, that we are getting a section, almost like a, a starry night, where we're getting these sections of, of pinpoints of white from the paper below that are starting to poke through because as this uh, pulls up the paint and pulls the moisture, it creates this effect for us. So anyway, uh, silica gel, uh, these desiccant packages, which are, you're not supposed to eat, so don't do that, but it can be used as an interesting technique to create a little bit of texture for what we do here with our acrylic paints. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you today. Five more awesome ways that you can augment your acrylic painting techniques by creating interesting textures. Thank you so much for your time. Always happy to have you along. And if you're not already a subscriber, yeah, take a moment to do it. It just takes a moment and you're gonna be really happy with the content we're gonna be sharing with you every single week. Anyway, this is Spider. Thanks so much for coming by and I'll see you next time.